It's almost like it tastes like farts. This is <laughs> in a good way. It's, it's something that I realize is I, every time I enjoy a citrus beer, there's like a little <laughs> fartiness to it. I like it. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time on the channel, hit subscribe right now. In the last few years, Cryptopsy, the technical death metal overlords from Canada, have released a number of really cool EPs. Now we know the band is working on new material, so it's time for me to sit down with singer Matt. Now Matt is also the mastermind behind the Vox and Hops podcast, where he talks to both heavy metal artists and people from the brewing industry about their passion, their craft, their inspirations. Matt and I are both fans of craft beer, so um, cheers. Congratulations on passing the milestone of 200 episodes for your podcast, uh, Vox and Hops. I think it's already time for a first cheer. I, was, I don't know what beer you're drinking right now. Sure, sure. Let me introduce this first brew. Uh, first off, thank you. Uh, and I'll introduce this first. It's always beer first with me. This is Mandrill from uh, Mabara City, which is a very, very cool, uh, kid-friendly brewery. So, so me okay. having two, two young kids uh, before the pandemic, I hung out here quite, quite a bit. It's walking distance from my house. It's a, a breaded saison with a 6% ABV. I'm going to start with that. All right, okay. awesome. Well, what, do you, what do you got on your side? Well, I've got the choice between, which I think will be out of my options here, uh, probably the best pairing with that. I've got a German style Keller beer. Um, I've got a, uh, a, a double bock, but that's uh, a little on the heavier side. So I'd say maybe first the Keller beer and then the double bock. Um, I also have a... Uh, a uh, low-cal IPA, keto-friendly, um, and I have a straight-up sour. Um, and cool. they're all coming from a uh, uh, tiny uh, brewery, Radical Road, here in Toronto, uh, around my corner. Cheers. Cheers. So this one's called Go For Broke. Amazing. Yeah, this is fantastic. Always fantastic. Um, love Mabadocity. Just, Just so, so good. As a, um, uh, let's just be honest, a Belgian beer nerd, um, sometimes it can bother me when, you know, it's lovely to see all the craft breweries popping up, but um, let's say that people are a little bit liberal with with, uh, with, with using labels and names uh, for beers at, at times, uh, specifically with Saison, that, which was like a year ago, I think was the hype in the city. Every, yeah. every brewery had a Saison. Um, is... Uh, and, and then I, I could get like personally offended when a beer is not really a saison at all. Uh, is that something like, am I just being too uptight or do you have similar sentiments? No, no, I'm very open to just styles because coming from you know the world of extreme metal, metal, metal gets a lot of bad raps if it isn't a particular style. But I, I think, you know, influence, as long as you're not naming it a saison, it, you know, I, that's why even the one that I had as my beer of the week this week the aval it was amazing but it wasn't a true saison mm -hmm. uh, they called it a new world yeah i saw that saison, an inspiration so 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 as long as you're aware of what you're doing versus just slapping a label on something trying to sell it as something because you know it's it, it that's what's hot at the moment and you're just trying to hop onto that then then i'm okay with that There's a very similar story in the world of extreme metal and particularly with, you know, cryptopsy. You know, cryptopsy has been labeled many, many things. I think most people tend to agree on technical death metal. Who, who is it in the band that says from time to time, oh, this song is great, but this really needs some jazz? <laughs> oh, no, no, that, that comes just naturally. And it comes, you know, back in the day, it really came from Jean Lavassar for sure. For sure, for sure. And then Flo's influence as well. But nowadays, it really just stems from some from crazy, stupid ideas of, of trial and error. Some things work and some things don't. Oh, 
almost like every album has very varied sounds and every album is different than the next. How is that for you to tackle as a singer? Because you have to take on a lot of different vocal styles. And it's one thing to learn how to play a different thing, a different different style on a musical instrument. Controlling your body from the inside out is, is a whole different game. So how do you tackle that? And do, are there certain eras that, you know, you just feel like naturally, you know, are better paired with your voice? Uh, initially, yes, absolutely. And when I when I joined, I was terrified for for exactly that. How I was going to represent the 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 Worm era, the the Salvo era, and do it justice and and carve my own path. So I just came in. I really didn't know what I was doing. I was mm -hmm. I was I was a metalcore singer that fell into a death metal band, and I just tried my best. And it took me many 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 years to to feel comfortable on stage and comfortable with what I was doing. Uh, but just recently, uh, it was after recording Tome 2 that, that, or while I was recording Tome 2, that I discovered this new voice, which was actually the voice I was using back in the day when I didn't know how to scream. It was just sort of what I would try to do for my gutturals. I didn't understand how easy and I was actually doing the right thing was. So, so it's basically just, uh, I call it my, we call it my Chris Bark, because it's <laughs> sort of like a, an, an early, not, not modern Chris Barnes. Yeah, yeah. We won't go, we won't go there, but early Chris Barnes <laughs> <laughs> guttural bark and any as I discovered that I was really just doing some sort of scream thing as I was walking back into the the vocal booth and Donaldson yeah. who records this all said said uh, go do some voices like that <laughs> and it made it onto the EP and honestly it's uh anytime I do anything Lord Worm era it goes and that is the vocals that I use for 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 90% of the track so it's really just a more open um breathy scream versus my more fry controlled vocals that is is where i primarily came from primarily came from and where i would tackle mike de salvos with because it has a bunch more uh, at the time now i can do both but uh, more articulation and i yeah. wanted to be able to to really bite into the words so so my chris bark is uh, now now my new when i'm going to be writing something new it's going to be a melding of the two voices which is sort of what ha started to happen on tome two but i would like yeah. to play with that even more <laughs> metal heads like uh, beer snobs are not always open to a lot of variety when uh, you know the first album that was recorded with you the unspoken king i i always applaud it when bands do new things or try new things not everybody applauds that um looking back <laughs> look looking back um you know i think it's one of the most divisive albums for for the fans um now that you've had a long time to take distance of that do you think that some of those those critiques were fair or or is the unspoken king really an, an underrated album for the band i i as a personal personal thing i i think that it was a a left turn that we shouldn't have taken there was some some interesting aspects of the the album which were very cool um but the band was in a very very strange state mm -hmm. it had just lost or it had just is, is a big word because it takes a long time to write cryptopsy albums that had just lost meaning a period of four years or something uh, John Lavassar, who was one of the primary influences that that challenger to flow to to keep him on track and pace of the the vision and vibe of Cryptopsy. So he was gone. There was like four cooks in the kitchen, all cooking different recipes yeah. on that album. So 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 when I joined the band, they had already written a vast majority of the material. Uh, they had written some some of it even with with Lord Worm. I think two tracks, and and me being coming in and coming from my world of Three Mile Scream, we were a very hardworking band that practiced four four times a week for for many 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 years. No matter what snowstorm, any there was you know no excuses. We were jamming. So so when I joined the band and I was calling the members of the band saying, when are we going to get together? When are we going to jam? We didn't jam until I, I joined the band in July. I, we didn't jam until February. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? So, so it was a very strange period for the band. And I really don't think they had one cohesive vision of what the album was going to be. We got really shit on because we had clean vocals. 
that was one of the the main main things that we got attacked for and uh, we never ever ever wrote up to write a death core album that's that's not what happened at all because the people that were writing the music i don't even think they knew what that was so yeah, yeah. well I thank mean, you donaldson there's two tracks two tracks that donaldson wrote and he comes more from a yeah. death core influence sure. but I, he was just trying to write something extreme yeah and then and then because of the unspoken king it took him so long to and he wasn't a fan and he still isn't a fan of, of this day we, we talk he hates it to this day so so from, from from that point up until the tomes he felt very uncomfortable writing for cryptopsy he felt like an imposter trying to imitate someone okay but now he feels more comfortable really with the two EPs that have come out. I think the first one was 2015 and the last one 2018, um, right. where all of a sudden there was this, again, this universal you know, acclaim. You guys also used, again, the, the classic logo. That's also making a statement, talking about beer labels earlier. Um, <laughs> you said, um, you know, when, I'm ri- when I will be writing newer material, uh, I will keep in mind those new voices that I found. Does that mean that you are planning the writing uh, uh, cycles. Are you already in that? Because a lot of people were very excited with those two EPs, but obviously now we all want more. Um, <laughs> when when yeah, can it, people expect more music from the band? Well, absolutely, absolutely. But to go back a bit, you know, John came back and helped us write um, the self-titled. He really came back, and he, he his mandate when he came back, when we asked him to come back, was to put Crypt- Cryptopsy back where it was supposed to be. Okay. So 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 that's how that all went down, and then he subsequently left again once he felt he had done his job. <laughs> sort of, Efficient. it was a compli- complicated <laughs> story. But <laughs> and then it took us a few years. We finally started writing the Book of Sufferings, and that's when Chris gained his confidence. And and the you know we we are the longest running Cryptopsy lineup, so we're finally yeah. we all know what Cryptopsy is, and we argue about what songs should be. So it's, it's, we're very far from those unspoken king days where where we just you know acquiesced and and let let something happen. It's 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 a fight to to the death if we're not happy about something and everybody has to be on board before we put something out. Now. And we were in a cottage in the woods writing a new cryptopsy album we're not doing another t- tome for now we'll do okay. another one in the future we're doing a full-length record we were in a cottage in the woods when trump pulled the plug on all international flights and that's when COVID started being taken seriously by the whole world and uh you know to leave it to cryptopsy go and write an album in the woods for the world to fall out, fall apart but that's what happened and uh it was a crazy like background setting of all of us like on our phones freaking out while writing just this just maddening maddening music uh, the stuff that is coming out is very 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 extreme uh very dark uh very cryptopsy but yet still exciting and new and when i say okay. exciting to new is it's exciting and new to us and we hope that that translates over to our fan base as well yeah i'm interesting when you say um you know it's 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 very extreme it's very dark and I somehow, and maybe it is because of the you, like the often, especially when you hear an album for the first time. There's a lot of unexpected turns and twists in every Cryptopsy album or in every song. Cryptopsy for me has always been one of those bands that I never really. I'm not talking about lyrics or imagery, but I'm talking about purely the music and the songs. I would I've never described Cryptopsy as dark because I always find that there is like an. Um, well, a lightness is not the right word, maybe, but because of these unexpected turns, it's almost like an upbeat version of extreme <laughs> music. Um, I'd like to understand better what you mean with a dark album. We're, we're trying to bring some some more elements of, of different vibes and something that uh, more atmospheric, okay. while staying true to the Cryptopsy sound. So, so we're we're concentrating more on that. And, and the constant changes that that's that's really what makes takes so long with cryptopsy that's why it takes so long for us to write a cryptopsy album is because there's all these little things to nitpick about and no no we're gonna do it three and a half times and then we're gonna play it backwards and then we're <laughs> gonna put it at half time and so so it's all those arguments and that's really why it takes so long for yeah, a yeah. cryptopsy record to come out because there's all these little things the traps that we like to call them yeah. that, that that we need to 
wrestle through and tempo changes. Everything has to be perfect. Uh, just like with all the, the twists and turns, um, is there a beer that you've had recently that on paper, like the death metal and jazz, would be a weird combination, but it really worked and you really liked it for some reason? Oh yeah, there was one just 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 recently that 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 I bought it out of pure curiosity. I didn't know I was going to okay. enjoy it or not. It was a pastry scotch ale. I think it was called the Scotchino, Chambarasserie no, General, and it's a scotch ale that was aged in bourbon barrels with um, vanilla and lactose, and I'm probably forgetting an adjunct, but but it was it was surprisingly delicious. I I really really enjoyed it. I knew it I would enjoy it, but it was like, what is this new style? <laughs> Let's see what it's got. I love Brasserie Generale from uh, Quebec City. They're just yep. killing it lately. But, but that, that would have been one that I was like, let's see if this they can pull this off. But of course they did because they're masters. Well, on that note, I'm going to open my double buck beer here um, to uh, have another sip. Um, talking about, you know, staying with the beer for a second. I mean, I we started off the conversation by saying congratulations on your 200th episode or plus now uh, for Vox and Hops. But uh, also c congratulations on you know the beer that you're gonna be releasing with Overhop. Uh, it's, it's not available. It's actually being canned. It's being canned this coming Thursday, right. and it will be available as of November 21st um, throughout Montreal region and at the brewery in Saint Jean sur Richelieu. It is a double dry hop New England IPA uh, with uh, I know these hops: Vic Secret, Enigma, and Citra hops. Okay. I was there for the brew day. It was uh, super cool. Every I've been seeing a bunch of pictures uh, of, of the process since I was there, and it's going into cans on, on this coming Thursday. So I'm very, very excited for that, and that is to celebrate the two-year anniversary of Vox and Hops. Yeah, yeah. And I luckily met the Overhop Canada people uh, at the Chambly Bière et Savard, which is a really, really cool. A beer fest that happens outside of this awesome fort in Chambly, Quebec, which is super close to Montreal. There was so many metalheads there. I was like walking around and being like, "You take a box and hops guard. You take a box and hops guard." Because you know, anyone that had a metal shirt is at a beer fest. I'm like, "You would like me." So I met Patty, the the one of the owners that day there and just like instant family and i have to give a shout out to my friend c4 from uh from the baos podcast who introduced me and patty even before we knew each other she he was like this kid he loves he loves your hop man uh and and when i met him i was like i'm going to do a collab with overhop canada i'm gonna call it vox and overhops <laughs> and this is this is a year and a half ago so so Nice. Sometimes you just got to put things in your mind and just push towards it. So it, right. it's, it's worked out. It was really, really, really cool. And I'm stoked to try it. I know that their beers are amazing. Which I can't wait to try this Vox and Overhops Double Dry yeah, yeah, Hop yeah. New England IPA. <laughs> That's going to pack a punch for sure uh, for the yeah, hop beer lovers. 7%. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just, just a quick side question for you know my own personal gain that's overhop um you know is it possible to get overhop beers uh, outside of quebec in ontario i i believe that they are no longer contract brewing in ontario i may be wrong they might have one or two brews still happening out there but uh to get your hands on vox and overhops no you would have to uh find a very nice kid and and ask him to do something illicit Yeah. Which which I am not encouraging. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Point well taken. Unfortunately for a singer, uh, drinking a lot of beer is not great for for vocal cords and performances. So how do you balance that? Drinking your no, I have way a lot of fun. I have I have a lot a lot of fun on tour, and it is. Uh, going to be a lot of fun going back on tour because I feel like the podcast has grown a lot since my last tour so it's going to be very interesting to see what occurs on the next ones but but uh, I try to sleep a lot and I really don't talk that much um, if, if I'm not on stage or before a gig I'm, I'm very quiet I'll stay up I'll enjoy a few beers but I, I try I don't I try not to get overboard 
I just try to taste the good ones and I share. It's really like a communal craft beer is about community and sharing and, and sharing and experience. So, so, so no, and sleep, sleep, I sleep as much as I can. So, so it's very difficult on those airplane everyday tours, lie down for 35 minutes and then get up and go on stage and then lie down for 45 minutes and then get in the airport chores. But, but you, you just have to do it and you have to try, try, try to rest as much as you can and work out, try to keep working out, try to keep that morale and mental, uh, mental health in shape and thinking positively it's it's really something that i've i've really been doing the whole time i'm in the band it's just remaining positive and, and and trying to shine some 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 light even in the darkest days on tour sometimes it's hard but 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 you got to stay positive because if everybody's dark it's going to be you're just going to spiral down that 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 negative whirlpool and and you don't want to get to the bottom because it's it's not going to work out <laughs> I, I I'm cracking this. This is a double IPA. This is a, the double double 100% Citra from Aral Buck. All right. Absolute amazing brewery. Shout out to my friend PA. This is an 8.4 100% Citra. It's going to be awesome. This is a new version of this one. I really enjoyed uh, the one that came out last year. So Perfect. I'm stoked about this one. I've been waiting for a good occasion. Well, I, I, I take that as an extreme compliment, so thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> mm, perfect. I love citrus. Citrus has this like, little... It's almost like it tastes like farts. This is <laughs> in a good way. It's, it's something that I realize is I, every time I enjoy a citrus beer, there's like a little fartiness to it. I like it. I'm pretty sure that this will be the, the, the first teaser clip of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> All the awesome. crap you're be like, what is he talking about? Maybe back to the music real quick. Um, I think what's something that um, a lot of people, including myself, and I've been playing um, specifically Tome 2 uh, over and over, um, it really feels as if the band went you know, took a step back, looked at the history and went like, we like this about that album, we like this about that album, we like this about that album, throw it all together in a blender, put a modern spin on it and, you know, go to take it to 11. Um, so is, is that something that from a music perspective we should expect again from the new album or are you guys going to surprise us even more? There will be some surprises, but it won't be drastic. It's, it's just going to be an evolution upon that. And, and, it, and it, it's really just... The dude's sitting in the room. Chris sits there with his guitar. He drinks copious amounts of beers and, and writes riffs. That's really what, what happens. And then sometimes he's like, what happens if, if I if I play backwards? <laughs> and then he does that. And, and then it works. I love that impression, by the way. <laughs> So, so we're, we're really picking from the the cryptopsy playbook which is what i've been i did too all of the tome two song titles are directly directly taken from non so vile lyrics mm -hmm. every single one of them most of the, yeah ev no out of uh, no and one of them is out of uh once was not so so yeah. we're, we're paying homage to the band we're trying to stay true to its core while remaining ourselves but we, we you know as i mentioned we are the longest running cryptopsy lineup yeah which, which says something in this in this era of, of extreme metal where, where it's 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 very hard to, to be an extreme musician and go out on tour and, and come home and try to try to make ends meet we all have kids most of us except for our bassist ollie it's 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 very difficult so so for us to, to be the the longest running lineup we we very well know what cryptopsy is now so so we want to as i you know we want to fight tooth and nail to 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 stay true to the values of what the band's foundation is mm -hmm. and and still have a roof roof over our head so there will be no unspoken king ever again i doubt <laughs> i will ever sing clean on a cryptopsy album again at least in the aspects of of how it was done in the past Um, you know, one thing that I want to share with you is when I came from uh, from Belgium, like I said, eight years ago to Canada, um, 
and you know building a social life here and what have you and obviously also with people that are not at all into harder music um the one canadian metal band that they all knew about and these are people my age so these are guys and girls that are between you know in their late 30s um so they were teenagers in the late 90s um cryptopsy is the one band that they know of not oh, cool. annihilator not dwarf kings not whatever not steppenwolf i mean maybe they know steppenwolf like how do you describe that that appeal that cryptopsy seems to have with so many different people maybe at different stages in their in their in their lives but um for such a and i mean this as a positive weird extreme metal band i think it stems down to the fact that it has two very influential albums and they did it back to back but it influenced two different generations and two different um, like generations of music musicians as well mm-hmm. if you look at none so vile it, it is a highly influential album with with the extremity the fastness the 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 tempo changes the the grooves uh lord worms uh, maniacal vocals inspired just like a whole slew of extreme bands that way and then with whisper supremacy coming out right afterwards being far more technical far more spastic it, it inspired like a whole bunch of kids to go start playing far more technical and, and in toronto specifically it, it stems to the fact that cryptopsy toured canada a lot so, yeah. so coming through and playing those shows, kids growing up at shows. Uh, out of anywhere in the world, I probably t- played Toronto the most, I would think, if mm-hmm. not more than Montreal. Even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I've well, I've seen you guys play in like the Rock Pile in Toronto, which is like a legendary, crazy. <laughs> <bit. laughs> so, what is his name? Rob. I think his name is Rob. Thank you so much for bringing us there. But but we got to play. We, we we're, we're going to play Toronto. <laughs> Oh, you mean not in Tobico in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> we did that a few times, eh? I mean, they had a good, they have a great, they, I mean, they had, I guess, now with COVID, but um, uh, Jake, the sound man, is really good there. Oh, the best. Yeah. Love him to death. Love He's it. great. Love, love. He, he toured with Cryptopsy before I was in the band. He did a whole, I think he did, I don't, I don't want to say, it, but he did a whole tour with Cryptopsy yeah. in the States, and, and they loved him. Yeah. And he's, I, he's, I, he's I, a I great guy. He's a great guy. Absolutely. I mean, I've known him for years and years and years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it happened. It happens more than once. That I think last time was uh, Michael Schenker, who played in Rockpile, and then after the yeah. show, just went straight to Jake and said, "Like, by the way, uh, we need you on the bus tomorrow." <laughs> like, All right. Yeah, he's he's fantastic. He he knows what he's doing, and I love. I, I used to love reading his his angry Facebook posts about local bands or, or some touring bands just not having their shit together. I'm gonna ask you one more question, and I'm gonna let you enjoy the rest of your beers. Let's bring beer and metal together. If I have to think about the ultimate beer metal anthem, I guess I'm kind of in between Tank Hard, 66 Six Packs. Or Nordheim with uh, with a beer, metal, trolls and vomit. Um, what's your favorite beer anthem? Oh, see, I, I, I have a beer podcast, and I don't even know about this. Uh, Alestorm has a bunch of great stuff. For sure. That's just that's just because I, I, I interviewed them, and I know them that way. But uh, I, I really don't know the answer to this question. I, uh, I would have to do more homework on... on <laughs> I like to drink beer and listen to metal. <laughs> that's maybe the best answer possible. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Matt, thank you so much for your time. I mean, we took a lot more time than we planned for. Uh, I hope that's not, uh, that's no issue. And uh, thank you for sharing your beers with me. Thank you for sharing your insights. Thank you for answering my questions. Um, I had a lot of fun. I appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to hear A, your topic for album of the year soon. Second, can't wait to taste both the Cryptopsy and the Vox and Hops beers. I'll have to find a Canadian, uh, a Quebecois who is willing to do something he or she should not be doing. And then third, um, sounds like we might have some updates coming our way about new Cryptopsy music in the near future. So that will be exciting too. Absolutely, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Matt. Cheers. 
you are awesome for watching this video. click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.